5 p.m. on Monday. That's right. And um, I'm going to just send it over to you, and you, you tell us what 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 do you have in store for us if we tune in to take it from Tara? Well, first of all, not to you know jump the gun here, but I'm so excited to be in the studio with your guest, right. Alan Rohde, because right. I'm a big fan of his. And so I can't wait to hear your show. And I love your show. And I listened to your show before I really got involved with Crescent Hill Radio on my own show. Well, thank you, Tara. So you're kind of one of my heroes. And you used to do the community announcements, and that was my phone. Oh, it's your <laughs> wife. It's your wife. Answer it. <laughs> I usually turn off my phone. I'm usually more professional. <laughs> Than that. That's okay. But anyway, yes, um, you, you did the community announcements on Crescent Hill Radio, and that's kind of how you you, you yeah. got introduced to Crescent Hill Radio. And I still am. And, and we've actually expanded the community announcements to include right. Animal Lost and Found. Right. And we're doing all kinds of things that are going on in the community. So very excited about that. You can send that. Email it to me from the website at Tara at Crescent Hill Radio. I'll be glad to get that on. And it plays three times a day. Cool. But Take It from Tara is a unique and eclectic little uh, variety kind of talk and interview show. Show. Alan was asking us about this earlier, and I have music involved too. I usually have a guest musician who comes in the studio, plays a, a couple of numbers, and plays in and out of breaks for me. We had James Sane last week, absolutely right. fantastic he was young singer songwriter who hopefully will be in your in your big competition thing coming up this weekend. And um, I would really love to see uh, more musicians come on and just get the same kind of exposure that we can give to them here right. at Crescent Hill Radio. Right. And, and you do a great job of getting so many local people playing. Well, and nobody else wants to play them, so well, good thank for you. you. I mean, we are all about local and regional, um, original music here, and we're the only station in Louisville that plays only um, local and regional original music, and That's we're right. proud of that. Now, I'm very proud to be a part of Crescent Hill Radio, and what's fun about it is that the people who are listening to us, I think, CJ, I'm going to kind of just hazard a guess at the demographic, I think they're community-minded, right. I think they're green, very much uh, sustainability-oriented, sure. I think they're animal lovers, Right. I'm pretty sure of that, and they love their local music. Just just good folks. Exactly. So those are the kind of folks who I'm actually talking to. Right. And I'm very happy to be hosting and uh, g bringing on all kinds of different guests. Last week we talked to a hospice veterinarian, a dentist, a real estate person, and a business person about their subjects. Have about 10 minutes per interview. Right. And just as a real quick promo, I've got one more show before Christmas. It's on Monday night, December okay. 17th. Some great guests coming up. And Christmas Eve, you're not going to believe this, but... I have the biggest get of my journalistic career. Uh, okay. I'm not going to tell you who my guest is, but it's someone who is significantly involved with Christmas. Okay. I, I don't believe that. I, I think it's, you're right. I mean, it's unbelievable, and you're just going to be amazed when you hear it. So tune in at five Christmas Eve, take it from Tara for a conversation with Claus. Wow. I know. Well, I was going to guess. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> Chris, Chris Kringle. Exactly. Well, right here. Thanks for giving me a few Hill minutes. Radio. Thank you very much. You're welcome, I Tara. I appreciate it. And, and, and do tune in to Take It From Tara. That's uh, 5 p.m. on Monday nights right here on Crescent Hill Radio. Thank Wonderful. you, Tara. I'm going to have you on as a guest one night, too. All right, great. Thanks, CJ. Thanks, Tara. All right. And we are back here. And you know what? what um, it, it's funny how time flies and they say the older you get the faster time goes and and you know i can attest to that can you i just realized um actually today that cumberland country has been on the air for for a year um as of uh december 8th of, of this year um, yeah. thank you thank you actually you know what i had this queued up and i forgot all about it. here we go there we go <laughs> but um you know, we've had a lot of fun here on Cumberland Country, and we started out, you know, um, doing kind of a pre-recorded show, and, and, and once a month we do a live show, and now we do it all live. And, and I was telling Alan um, before the show that actually Mick, Mickey Clark was my first live guest. Um, so uh, I want to just take a second, um, first of all, to thank Kathy Weisbach. She's the owner of the station, and she is kind of the... Uh, the queen bee here at Crescent Hill Radio uh, for allowing me to indulge my desire to um, expose people to the best local and regional country bluegrass and Americana music. Um, also want to thank my producer, Kelly Newton. I told her I was going to call her out. Um, we wouldn't sound good at all if it wasn't for Kelly. She, uh, she works really hard. She's the wizard behind the curtain. Um, and I want to give a shout out to her. I want to thank all the local and regional bands and singer-songwriters who have uh, allowed me to play their music. And um, 
I've said it before that there would be no national music without local music. It starts right here. So um, um, don't take it for granted. You know, get out there and support local music. Most of all, I want to thank my listeners. Um, without you guys, there would be no Cumberland Country. And uh, just keep listening, um, both of you. <laughs> three. There's three of us. Um, just kidding. <laughs> Um, keep listening, and um, um, we're hoping the second year of Cumber Cl- Country is going to be the best ever. Um, we do have Alan Rohde in the studio with us tonight. He's a singing, singer-songwriter from Nashville, Tennessee. He's from Louisville, but he lives in Nashville now. Um, we're going to get right to him. Um, how you doing, Alan? I'm doing great. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, and it's great to be here. Great, man. I've uh, checked you guys out on the web and uh, impressed. Well, cool. Um, Glad to be on the show. I can't think, as I said earlier, I can't think of a better guest to you know start the second year on Cumberland Country um, than Alan Rohde. You're right here from Louisville, um, and you, you know, I read your bio, and it said at the age of 31 you found your musical calling, um, and you moved to Nashville, and you were immediately hailed as a bright new talent with the songs being covered by the who's who's of country folk and bluegrass artists um you travel year round um playing festivals and you know venues uh conducting songwriting workshops um whenever possible some of the artists have covered your songs are uh, del mccurry george jones elk ridge boys toby keith ricky van shelton etc so uh et cetera did an especially good job yeah i like that cut i really do we'll have to talk more about that later but uh welcome to cumberland country well, and thanks thank for being you, on thank you and and you are in town um you're doing a show at the rudyard kipling saturday and we're going to talk more about that later mm-hmm. but let's get right into it um tell us about growing up in louisville Where, whereabouts in louisville did you grow up well i was born Right downtown in the old Jewish hospital, which doesn't exist anymore. Okay. And uh, when I was about three, my family actually moved to Mississippi. My dad was a social worker. No kidding. And uh, he had just gotten back from World War II. He was in the art. Was, uh, we, we lived at Bowman Field, actually. Okay. Right out there by the Air Devil's Inn. <laughs> right. Anyway, we moved to Meridian, Mississippi. We lived there for five years. Middle of third grade. We moved back to Kentucky to Hopkinsville. Okay. Because my dad uh, worked, he got a a job at that point at Western State Mental Hospital. He went on to become a mental health executive for the state of Kentucky. Right. Hoptown, as it's called. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, got as far as the seventh grade, and then we moved back to Louisville. Right where he continued to work for the state. Okay. And uh, he was uh, superintendent of what used to be Kentucky Children's Home. Okay. Out there in Linden. I don't know if y'all are familiar with that. Right. It's kind of, it's gone now too, but uh, he was a great asset to all those uh, establishments and programs. He helped start uh, a thing called Community Chest down in uh, Meridian. And also uh, helped start Big Brother, the Big Brother program down there. Hmm. Um, And I went to Eastern High School. Okay. And uh, I, you know, I've always been a huge music lover growing up. My my older brother and I bought all kinds of records, everybody you can think of in the rock and roll and and doo-wop world, I guess you'd say. but we were huge fans of Buddy Holly, um, you know, um, I don't know, just tons of people that I could name. The Beach Boys, uh, Little Richard, Johnny Cash, mm-hmm. uh, everything. You know, back then, radio was just radio. And right. uh, you'd hear Johnny Cash and Little Richard back-to-back on the right. same program and Chuck Berry. and. Right. I just love Chuck right. Berry, and I drove I drove uh, over to Lebanon Junction one time when I was in a I was a sophomore in high school, and uh, had a '57 Chevrolet, and mm-hmm. I drove it over to Lebanon Junction to hear Jerry Lee Lewis. Oh wow! At this club over there, the Horseshoe Horseshoe mm-hmm. Tavern, I think, or the Horseshoe Golden Horseshoe, I believe it was. Anyway, there was uh, beer and broken glass on the floor. Okay. 
his, his band played for an hour All right. before he ever came out, and he came out and just tore the roof off the place. I bet. That was a memorable experience. The killer. Yeah. And real briefly, while I'm at it, in, the, in those years, uh, a high school friend of mine, uh, who I didn't even realize at the time that he was doing this, he was in the same graduating class, named Danny Knipe. Okay. And Middletown had Middletown Elementary School. Right. And they started having the Middletown Hop. Okay. And you could go over there, 50 cents, 75 cents. I saw um, Roy Orbison over there. Wow. Frankie Lyman, James Brown. I mean, I look back on those years, and I d- had no idea how fortunate we all were, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, that was that was a good time. And I graduated from Eastern. Right. It's, it's, and uh, got an art uh, scholarship to go to the Art Center School, which was downtown. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was part of U of L. It became the Louisville School of Art right. later. But I graduated from there in 68 and uh, got drafted. I was a conscientious objector. Okay. And uh, when I got orders to Vietnam, I it was a, a long, soul-searching, deliberating decision. Sure, sure. Talked it over with my family, my wife, and uh, everybody at the time thought I was crazy, but I, I went to Canada. I, wasn't, okay. I was not going to participate in that. Right. And... Uh, you know, it's uh, it, it was uh, one of the rougher times in my life, right. all, all things bet. considered. I because, well, and I don't want to get off on this for very long because we have a lot to do tonight. Right. But when I went up there, uh, I had to look at it like I was not coming back right. ever to the states. Sure. And um, luckily, after eight years, uh, President Ford, after he had pardoned Nixon. Mm-hmm. Um, started a program long story short that offered uh, anyone that wanted to come back right to come back legally and uh, and I was given a discharge not a dishonorable discharge okay. but a discharge right. um, undesirable discharge mm. <laughs> Imagine the that. army didn't desire me and I didn't desire right. the army so we had a amicable parting of the ways and uh, and that was uh, that, I lived in Toronto at that time, and mm-hmm. I had started playing music. Okay. You know, you mentioned my musical calling. I was more like 25 or so. Right. But uh, I was 31 when I got to Nashville. Gotcha. But uh, I had started a fairly decent career up there. I did TV, good bit of TV work. I was mm-hmm. on Ian Tyson's uh, TV show. Okay. I wrote jingles. I sang some national jingles for... Uh, Skidoo and uh, Molson beer. Right. <laughs> so I was uh, doing whatever I could to uh, to stay in music right. and and write my own songs Great. and played all over the place, universities, bars, everywhere right. I could. I put out two singles up there. Uh, they were on London Records, so I was a okay. I was a label mate of the Rolling Stones cool. for about a year. <laughs> well, well, speaking of uh, uh, writing songs and playing music, you brought your guitar yeah. today, so uh, yeah. let's get right into a to a live tune right now. What are you going to play for us? Uh, I'm going to do a song from my CD uh, from 2008 called "Boxcars of Memories." Okay, and uh, it's a song called "Trying to Find a Feeling." Trying to find a feeling. Alan Rohde on Cumberland Country. Rain on the highway, hard to see clear Drive through the lonely, been a rough year Heart full of arrows, love and regret Try to move on, but it's hard to forget Old friends have scattered, heroes have died Last time I saw her, she broke down and cried I held her hand, said, baby, I know Tried to find a feeling Felt long ago Well, up into the valley To the mountains and back Followed the sun Till it faded to black Reached to the sky Shook the blanket of stars They fell to the street The lights of the cars 
miss of the tires, the smell of the rain. How can so close and so far be the same? I stood and watched the rain turn to snow, tried to find a feeling felt long ago. Was it really that strong and that sweet? Or were we just young? Were we just trying to be what we thought we'd become? Were we just hungry in the time and the place we came from? Brand new day, sitting at a crossing, a slow moving train. Boxcars of memories, they groan and they grind. They rumble and rattle, and roll down the line. Everything's quiet on the road up ahead. Warm and as smooth as the sheets on her bed. The sky up above, the same blue as her eyes. Last time I saw her, I broke down and cried. She held my hand, said, baby, I know, trying to find a feeling felt long ago. Was it really that strong and that sweet, or were we just young? Were we just trying to be what we thought we'd become? Or was it just life? time and the place we came from oh yeah rain on the highway hard to see clear drive through the lonely been a rough year Great song, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let's talk for a second about um, your influences. Um, a question I like to ask um, my guest is, um, I don't know if you're uh, in, in, into the digital age. Do you have an iPod? An iPod? No, I don't. You don't? Okay. Well, my question was going to be, what's on Alan Roddy's iPod? But I guess <laughs> I'll, I'll shift gears and say, who do you like to listen to when you're just listening to music? Well, I do a lot of listening when I'm driving, right. when I'm traveling, and uh, excuse me, I'll uh, I'll either take a, a box of my favorite CDs with right. me, or I'll uh, make up some compilation CDs. I, I'd like to get XM actually, so I can tune in some of those great channels right. they have. I actually rented a car on my honeymoon and it had satellite radio. When yeah, I was, I, yeah. Was in I love satellite radio. Yeah. Uh, but my gosh, the uh, I have such a long list of favorite people and influences. Um, uh, Bob Dylan is probably my biggest songwriting hero, sure. uh, if you want to call it that. Um, and it's funny because I heard him uh, when I was in the first band I was ever in when I was in college. Uh, this this friend of mine across the street, his brother uh, knew a guy on radio, and they'd get all these singles that they would bring home and play and and we put on this single one day and it was um, Maggie's Farm mm -hmm. <laughs> and we didn't love it we didn't hate it we didn't like it we did not know what to think of it okay and up to that point like I mentioned I was just a, a young rock and roll kind of person right it was just a strange sound and then later on in college um, some friends of mine had a band, and uh, people would come in, and we, they'd bring a guitar in, and we'd sing songs around, you know, lunch hour and stuff. And this friend of mine says, "Hey, have you heard about this Bob Dylan guy?" <laughs> <You know? laughs> I said, "Wait a minute, I've heard of that guy." Right. And uh, 
and then next thing you know, uh, you know, don't think twice and all that stuff was all over the radio. Right. And I just, and it was nothing like the record I had already heard, which was his, you know, early electric sure. stuff already. So uh, I immediately tuned in him and the whole Greenwich Village thing, uh, sure. Lead Belly, Reverend Gary Davis. Oh, gosh, uh, Ramblin' Jack Elliott, Arnold Guthrie, uh, Buffy St. Marie, Joan right. Baez. Right. Just all kinds of folk people. And um, these days I listen to all kinds of people as well. Uh, John Prine, uh, who came along and just knocked everybody's socks sure. off. He, uh, he instantly became one of my songwriting uh, mentors without him even knowing it. I just could not get enough John Prine and... Um, Steve Goodman was another another great singer songwriter, right. um, and uh, these days I have records by um, besides Dylan and Leonard Cohen, um, Joni Mitchell. Right. Um, in the country world, uh, I guess it, it's still singer songwriters, but uh, you know people like Christopherson. Uh, and on, on nowadays, uh, what you you know, mainstream country, I, I think Blake Shelton is a huge talent, right. and Miranda Lambert as well. Sure. Um, I've I've always liked, um, uh, f- well, Faith Hill I like a lot. Um, right. I'm trying to think of some others that are right out there right now that that I'm really impressed with, but you know, I've just always had really eclectic taste. Um, and and when you see people like. Um, Kid Rock or Cheryl Crow right. coming into Nashville and doing mm-hmm. this country thing. <laughs> it's 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 fun and entertaining, and at the same time, you have to wonder if they didn't just follow the action. Exactly. Right along with other people exactly. like um, Darius Rucker. Exactly. From, Hootie, uh, and the Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> I mean, that guy, that, I just, I, that was blew me away when he when he went country like that. Right. And he has made a huge success. He has. It. And uh, it's good to see that stuff. And yeah. You know, uh, it's been said that country music gets played uh, on the radio more than any other format yep. overall. I believe that. in in America, and I do believe that too. But uh, yeah, I like a lot of different people. Right. Well, somebody I've been listening to a lot lately is is Alan Rohde. I've been listening <laughs> to your new album, Led by Love. I'm, well, thank you. And honestly, I'm not just saying that because you're here, but I do well, I, I do like it. it. And we're gonna we're actually gonna play a cut from that album um, right now. On okay. Cumberland Country, we're going to play "Bad Times." Do you want Great. to say anything about that before we? I wrote this song with a good friend of mine named Murray McLaughlin, um, who's uh, very famous in Canada. He's he was a folk rock star mm-hmm. in the eighties and went on to become male country vocalist uh, seven years in a row. Wow! Uh, he's got eleven Juno awards, which is equivalent to our Grammys. But right. Murray and I have been writing songs a long time, and. Uh, we uh, we write very easily. Uh, it's not a struggle at all. And uh, right. this is a very recent song of ours. And and I think the economic and political climate that we've been in for the last eight or ten years um, unconsciously had a lot to do with this okay. song. It's just about it's about hanging in there when when the times really do get tough. Right. And I'm sure we all can relate. Here is uh, "Bad Times" by Alan Rohde on Cumberland Country. Ages turn, days go by, take every chance, try every door, sometimes you love, sometimes you lose, things have changed, things have changed forever more, is there a plan? Sharpest pain, the sharpest pain will one day go. Bad times don't let go of the wheel. You've been going through 
some bad times that only time can heal. Bad times keep your hands on the wheel. You've been going through some bad times that only Surrender to your faith. Sometimes you have to draw, you have to draw to an inside straight. It's what you give, it's what you take. You gotta take a risk, and baby, you're wide awake. You might walk the edge. You might lose your way Our mistakes get made They get made Somebody pays Oh, bad times Don't let go of the wheel You've been going through some bad times That only time can heal Bad times Keep your hands on It's Bad Times, Alan Rohde, um, and we are live with Alan Rohde on Cumberland Country. Um, hey, Alan. Hey, hey, that was, uh, that's my ninth album, actually. Led it's by Led Love. Led by Love, right. yeah. And um, I actually saw you um, uh, a few weeks back with uh, John Gage and his son Will. Um, yeah, what a night that Rudd, was. That was Rudyard a Kipling. wonderful night. That was a good night. Um, Great turnout, and uh, the crowd just couldn't have been nicer. Right. And, and Will uh, Gage, Will Owen Gage is just... He's something else, isn't he's he? He's a talent beyond uh, talking, I mean, words. You know, he's, I don't know, I think he's like 24. Right. And they and, were on the uh, show. They were on Cumberland Country. Um, oh, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so Will uh, is just extremely, he's, he's, he's amazing. He is. He he's going to go far. I think so. Um, let's talk, um, Alan, a little bit about your writing Um mm-hmm. Because you are, you're a songwriter, and and you're a performer also. And uh, I was talking when we were talking about your influence, influences earlier. I was going to ask you, mm-hmm. um, did you go into it wanting to be a songwriter, or, or did you have more aspirations of being a performer? Or did how how did that work out? Well, I I took up guitar out of the pure love of music, right, and. Uh, I discovered people like Jimmy Rogers, the old yodeling sure. brakeman. At the same time, I discovered uh, some of the some of the folky people back then, and uh, I I started out being a singer, you know, right. a guitar playing singer. And within the first year and a half that I was playing guitar, I wasn't doing it in front of people or professionally yet. Right. But I just once I got into Dylan and so many of those other wonderful writers back then, I just immediately wanted to at least try to write my own songs. Sure, and it was a real trial and error process for me. Uh, um, and I just gradually grew into it. And and as as I got into my first few years of of professionally performing, 
it was one of those deals like most people that when you start out and you're playing maybe bars or whatever i would i would play all cover music and then slip in a few of my own sure. songs and then i gradually got up to where my show was about 50 50 right and uh just went from there and the longer I did it, the more uh, confident I felt about uh, just being my own singer-songwriter right. and trying to say, this is what I do. Right. You and, know? That, and that's sort of the nature of the beast, I think, especially here in Louisville, maybe not so much in Nashville, but to, to, for a singer-songwriter or a band to play out in Louisville, you pretty much have to play cover music and uh-huh. slip those original songs in there right i right. i really do hate that it's like that and and you know you can tell us nashville's probably a little bit differently they're more accepting of original music down there well they are and and it's uh only because these days uh it's almost expected that almost everybody you hear is is writing their own songs right. and trying to trying to be a songwriter um and and it's just overrun with songwriters down there, and and they just never stop coming. Right. But that's okay. That's yeah. a good thing. Uh, so, the clubs down there have a real advantage. Most most clubs have an advantage anyway over musicians who are looking for work. But you know, down there, you can go out any night of the week, and you can do that in Louisville too. But down there, it's this songwriter shows. Um, just about every night there's one somewhere right and uh you can you can hear just such quality stuff sure and most of these people you haven't heard of and you might hear of them a year later you know right. well you know i mentioned at the top of the show that i mean you know and i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna toot your horn here for a second you're the real deal here i mean you you've had songs covered by you know george jones the oak ridge boys toby keith ricky van shelton etc as we mentioned (laughs) um and as a songwriter myself and i I know i have a lot of uh, listeners who are are songwriters out there um you know i'm glad to have you on the show um what i wanted to ask you is um do you have a process when you write i mean uh, it, it it's it's not really a process, and when I do these workshops, uh, these all these questions are always asked. And right. I I'm just one of those people that, you know, a song has started from um, a, a a line, a phrase, or a guitar riff. Right. Uh, sometimes I'll get a melody in my head. I wrote a song once coming home from a gig to the tempo of the windshield wipers. Mm-hmm. without any instrument and got home and found the chords that would fit sure I and mean, i had this thing almost halfway written by right. the time i got home because i just kept singing it but uh they they just come in in every different f- um form uh as far as getting something started right and and another thing i do tell writers that are uh aspiring or whatever you know Getting song ideas and starting a song is not the hard part. Sure. The hard part 